Shalom. This week's sedra is Matos Masse. It's a double sedra, and we are merit, we merit a great privilege of learning double the amount of Torah. This Tvar Torah is going to concentrate on the second of the sedros, Masse. Mistakes are, are the scorn of the internet. Mistakenly posted pictures, ill-written status updates, angrily sent emails are all the conduit of errors that we wish we could, be, we could reverse. While many of these mistakes could have been prevented, some were beyond our control. And sometimes mistakes that we wish never happened, it do happen. Mistakes are the learning spur of mankind. Some of the greatest achievements have been made and could only have been made in reaction to mistakes and what we do to correct them. As in all of life circumstances, the Torah addresses mistakes and deals with the harshest of all mistakes, death. When accidental death occurs, that's a huge part of this week's sedra. And the Torah addresses it, and in the discussion of accidents, a great lesson of personal responsibility is taught. In our sedra, Hashem commands Moshe to build what are called Ir Miklat, Ari Miklat, which are cities of refuge. When somebody kills somebody accidentally, not on purpose, didn't premeditate to kill them, they run and take refuge in these cities. And if, in a case that's proven correct, if in truth, in reality, they, they, the taking of the life was accidental, they live in that Ir Miklat until the Kohen Gadol dies. If they ever step at foot out of that Ir Miklat, the family members of the victim are permitted, and in some circumstances, even have the command to kill this person. The Ir Miklat was also a city of punishment, as they had to stay there until the Kohen died. They were secluded in that area, sort of like under, not house arrest, but city arrest. Inherent in the verse of the intentional killer are the categories of accidents. And we have three categories of accidental death. We have accidental death that was completely an accident. There was no premeditated attempt to kill somebody. It was just a pure accident that could not have been prevented, was not foreseeable. The second type of murder that we have is where somebody premeditates and thinks out how they're going to kill somebody and then goes ahead and kills them. The first case of somebody that's the complete accident that could not have been foreseeable is let go with absolutely no punishment whatsoever as they couldn't have done anything and they're not responsible for their actions. The premeditated murderer, if proven and was warned and a bunch of, uh, a bunch of variables are met, so then that person will be executed by the court. The third category of killer we have is somebody who didn't intend to kill somebody. His taking of life was completely un unintentionable, but the manner in which the life was taken could have been prevented. He was negligent in his killing. A person that's negligent is this person who's sent to the Ermikla, to the city of refuge, to live until the Kohen Gadol passes away. Now, this seems like a pretty harsh punishment to live under city arrest if the person couldn't have, could have, excuse me, had no intention of killing the person. But this week's Sedra teaches us that we aren't only punished for the intent to kill, but for the responsibility of ending a life. I'd like to quote for you the Rambam. And the Rambam is discussing when this person eventually leaves the Aramiklat, and he says as follows, that even an unintentional killer should be diminished in his nature for the rest of his life. In other words, if he had a punishment, if he had a position of honor when he committed this act, again, negligently and unintentionally, but he had this position of honor, when he leaves the Aramiklat, he's not returned to that position of honor. Why? Because of the great calamity that he caused, the Rambam says. In other words, he's not held to the point of responsibility where we're going to execute him, but the Torah does place responsibility for the shvi chastamim, for the ending of life that he caused. Accidents by way of negligence might be devoid of intention, but they're not devoid of consequence and therefore responsibility. The lesson taught by this week's sedra is that we're responsible for our actions, and we must be sure that our actions don't lead to unintended but foreseeable consequences. This isn't just true of life and death, but it's true of all aspects of our life and is especially true for parents and teachers. They must foresee the consequences of their words. And is also true, as many of us know, on our workings on Facebook, Twitter, and email. Shabbat Shalom.